to 3D printing news unpeeled live with your peels courtesy of 3D print.com and today we're going to look at the, the 3D printing news of the day and the top uh, news items one of them is well you've already, already talked about this one um it is the Wilson airless basketball so this is a prototype uh, basketball uh, that was made by Wilson and was introduced at the ATT slam dunk contest uh, on Saturday <clears throat> Uh, KJ Martin was the player that got to handle it and show it off uh, for Wilson at that uh, huge event. Now, what is it? Uh, it's made out of a proprietary material, probably like a TPU blender or, or a derivative of that, but it could be something else, uh, proprietary or local to AOS and its partners. Uh, the lattice structure and the computation of the design itself, which is the difficult number crunchy bit, was done by General Lattice, and which really showcases their uh, ability in this uh, front to make it airless basketball. So basketball only comprised of a skin, um, and that skin is then uh, made out of, well, powder bed fusion uh, material. Now, the people that helped bring this to market besides General Lattice and AOS itself are Additive Minds, which is the, the implementation consultancy group, the consultancy group of AOS. They use Dimension on, on post-processing. Now, they describe the ball as playable uh, and coming close to the, the, the specifications of, of, of regulation bat and basketball, but with a good uh, bounce uh, to it. Um, now, what did they print this on? Like the first, the, the most logical thing was would be the Integra, the 400, 450, whatever, the, which is the, the printer that was specifically done for like kind of like TPU bouncy kind of uh, materials, stuff like that. But that uh, machine seems to not really feature very prominently on the AOS web pages. I tried to find it because I thought, hey, this is a logical system for this to be printed on. But maybe it's a P3 or some of like that. I don't know. <laughs> um, so. You know, I love this as a marketing thing is, hey, guys, this is how you do marketing. Uh, let's wake up. And uh, AOS has, has, has been a bit quiet of late, but hey, this is beautiful. We're really a big watched event, millions of people, really large sports uh, sportswear manufacturing. You introduce a ball, a new ball. Beautiful. Now, what I love most about this is, uh, apart from it being really well executed, is the fact that it really gets a lot of people's minds thinking. A lot of people would be sitting at home with their kids or friends and looking at this all-star game. And then they'll all of a sudden be thinking, hey, wait a minute, can we use this kind of a structure? Can we use this kind of structure, uh, this 3D printed for our application, for our dampening application, for our thing? And they'll start thinking about programmable foams and foam products and also the idea of, of generating lattices or other structures to, to, to have a certain elasticity and a certain programmable kind of surface. And I think that could be a really beautiful inspirational tool for people to kind of think, oh, wait a minute, I should go talk to these AOS people because I really want to do a damping solution. I really want to do a car seat or I really want to look at if we can do, you know, more compact airplane seats or handles for, for, for uh, sports gear. I love sports gear handles is my favorite kind of application in this area. <clears throat> it's a higher comfort. Uh, you can play your sport longer. You can have less stress on you and maybe become better at it, maybe more comfortable. And it could be specific to you as a person as well. It could be, um, so that, to me, is, is, is the area where I see this being applied the most. But I also really like car seats and all sorts of stuff like that. So, And I really like, uh, I don't know if we're all going all to be playing with AOS-made basketballs at one point or if that's a cost, from a cost perspective, a good idea. But as a marketing thing, it's an absolute, absolute home run in the basketball field here. Uh, absolutely fantastically done. And, uh, you know, we mustn't forget that the, the violin on the cover of The Economist was also AOS. So... Um, yeah, they're doing a good, uh, a good job there. Um, the next thing is chocolate. And, and I know <laughs> chocolate 3D printing, there have been so many more news releases than actual breakers in chocolate 3D printing than, uh, than yeah, that I thought, <laughs> you know, it's, it, you're like, oh, no, local area man 3D prints chocolate again, right? That's what you're thinking. Well, this one I included because it has an interesting twist. Uh, so it's Professor King Rong. Uh, Huang of Rutgers University. Uh, he's in the Department of Food Science, the uh, uh, School of Environmental and Biological Sciences. And he's looking at sugar content in chocolate. So he's trying to make low fat, low sugar content chocolate using additive manufacturing 3D printing. What he's done now is done like the cocoa butter part of that. He's replaced <clears throat> with a water cocoa butter emulsion being put together, uh, kind of held together by Gamma Arabic. Um, so it uses a lot less local cocoa butter. This is far cheaper, by the way, but also uh, means that um, it's 
uh, well, potentially less fat. And uh, they add a little bit of golden syrup in there, and then they have something that apparently tastes really well and works really well out of the 3D printer. So a lot of people have been thinking about 3D printing to print different shapes of food. I really don't see the value there that much. But the idea of tailored food products, the idea of, for example, arranging a sugar crystal, arranging sugar in a, in a candy uh, confectionery so that it tastes more sugary, arranging salt or are rearranging their ingredients to get a better mouthfeel or, or, uh, you know, getting rid of the, the kind of the nasty for us ingredients of salt and sugar and, and fat and, and making it taste as good That is a huge area. And the idea of, of using additive manufacturing, not to get the shape, let's say, or per se to get the shape, um, but to use it to, to, to enable new mixtures to be made, I think, uh, could have a, a you know, a, a real, uh, could really reverberate uh, through the food industry generally. The next thing is an announcement by the UK uh, government that they've been working together to, in a matter of months or a matter of weeks, uh, develop suicide drones specifically for Ukraine. I'm very interested in this piece of news because it's something I predicted would happen. Um, so uh, at this point, they got Kinetic, the future, which is a large UK-based defense contractor, to work with F uh, Future Capability Group, which is a part of the, the DES or DNS, uh, the Defense Equipment Support Branch. They also work with the Royal Air Force, Ra Rapid Capabilities Office, the Navy, the 56 Quadrant, the Royal Artillery, the Defense and Science and Technology Laboratories, DSTL, and the Strategic Command and the HQ. <laughs> Altogether, the meetings must have been hilarious um, uh, to, to all develop... Uh, uh, kind of sacrificial drones or to develop kind of suicide drones specifically for the conflict in the Ukraine. So they've really shortened, condensed their production time. Uh, they've really developed something specifically for that conflict. So looking at uh, Russian air defenses or Russian capabilities in, in monitoring and jamming, uh, looking at what the battlefield uh, requires and the climactic conditions they've made specific drones for this conflict right now. And yeah, the, the, the project, some were, were made in months and some in, in just weeks. So imagine that, you know, we both have a piece of kit or we both have a war and you gradually improve and iterate your drones all the time and mine just stay the same. At one point, you're going to outclass me, obviously. Uh, so this to me is um, a way forward. I've been talking about this since around 2000. 11 or something like that, uh, the idea of drone swarms and the idea of sacrificial drones and drones made specifically for a conflict and iterated all the time. And uh, it's nice, uh, oh, nice, it's not nice because it's a war fighting thing, but it's good to, to kind of be proven out and that this is actually happening. Uh, what's more, the American Phoenix Ghost program probably shows signs of being the same thing. And there's also a shipborne UAS uh, or a uh, 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 program as well that seems to maybe be benefiting significantly from through printing in this rapid time to market uh, kind of thing that we can do. So we are the future of war, whether we like it or not, and we're going to be used to uh, improve missiles and drones, all sorts of uh, war vehicles to the actual current situation. Uh, the drones are tested, boss them down. Um, they deploy also kind of like relatively inexpensive components. I know this thing doesn't look really amazing, uh, by the way. Uh, the form and fit and finish of this aren't, aren't incredible. There's a picture of the actual drone. And they also use what looks like to be quite inexpensive components. Uh, what you see the red thing is a micro turbine, I think. Might be an AMT one or some other kind of similar kind of micro turbine device. These are really inexpensive little engines that they use for drones, but you can also use for like RC aircraft even. And uh, these can cost like anywhere from three to twenty thousand dollars or something like that. And imagine then, you know, bringing down the cost of this thing radically and making it conform to one mission very, very specifically, so you can keep costs low by using standard elements, the right design cues and ideas from three D printing, and uh, just getting this thing in the air very, very quickly. Uh, so this is, um, well, a very good development for the, the proliferation of three D printing, uh, but it is something from an ethical side uh, side of things we need to kind of. Uh, be thinking a little bit more about what happens if we're a war-winning technology or not, and um, what happens if we're deployed more widely in, in war fighting. And uh, yeah, on uh, that kind of really weighty, uh, heavy thought, uh, I leave you. And uh, my name is Joris Peels. This is 3D Printing News Unpeeled, and uh, this is all courtesy of 3dprint.com. I hope this is useful for you, and hope you enjoy this, and uh, have a wonderful day.